people talk as if the investment community got interested in space overnight, but what actually is happening is these little startups have been knocking on doors for years. What's different now is suddenly, it's not that they have more money, it's that the VCs see the demand. They see Virgin Galactic selling tickets, they see five rich people going up into space, they see the zero-g flight, suddenly they say, wow, this, this could actually be real. And many of them remember the days of Sputnik, they were interested in space themselves, and suddenly they see that maybe it's going to happen after all. But it's not going to happen through government spending, it's going to happen through commercial entities, just the way the internet, which began as a government project, suddenly really got big when it became a platform for commercial innovation. Yeah, one, one really interesting thing about space is how many of the guys I know from the IT world, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Paul Allen, uh, John Carmack, they're, they're finding a second life doing stuff in space. And it's, it's because the energy is the same. The challenges are, they're specifically different, but it's the same challenge. Can you really make this work? Will people really eat it? It's uh, the, the change you see in space that has to happen is like the change from DOS to Windows. Suddenly it needs to go from a science project with a type-in command line to something that's graphical and user-friendly and accessible. I think, you know, the, it, people ask about parallels. The first big parallel was simply the privatization of something, whether it's the internet or space, that just unleashes huge amounts of commercial energy, it unleashes capital, it unleashes outrageous sales pitches, it un out unleashes sleazy marketing people, but it also unleashes something real. It creates a platform for innovation, for human development, for jobs, for education, and so forth. The, the other interesting parallel is we had, in a sense, we had the space.com boom back in the 60s, and it, it turned out it fell apart because there was no sustainability to it. There was government spending, but other than large, giant corporations, there wasn't this kind of outpouring of commercial entrepreneurial energy. And so we're having, in space, our second coming very, very late, but I think this time it's, it's going to stick because you're creating these kinds of entrepreneurial enterprises that will sustain themselves. The way I made this change is, first of all, my father actually helped design a rocket ship when I was seven. So I've always been kind of aware of this stuff. And then it's, it's just another new frontier. I'm not really in, quote, the internet business. I'm in the business of helping new companies and new ideas and, and new technologies find their place. And I like helping startups. I like helping startups disrupt something. And that's why I'm doing this all over again. The internet has been through that disruptive phase. Now space is going through it. The most exciting thing I saw was John Carmack. If, if you want to make an analogy, John Carmack is trial and error evolution versus these government programs, I think you could call them intelligent design. I have a workshop coming up called Flight School, which is kind of like the, the very best parts of a conference. What we want to do is make the conference in the room as interesting as most conferences are and, and the hallways outside. So what we're doing is bringing together a lot of the players in both space and aviation startups, talking about the business issues, the finance issues, and most importantly, the customer issues. Understanding the customers, segmenting your customer base, and how to make it an experience that people will want to pay for.